In the first reading, Isaiah is not addressing the people. He's really not even addressing us. He's standing before the Lord of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. He places himself in that awesome presence and acknowledges how sinful he is, how sinful everyone around him is, how corrupt the nation is, how people have forgotten the mighty deeds of God and are living on their own wits and their lack of wisdom. And he acknowledges there's absolutely no good reason God should care for the likes of us. And that's essentially what the culture of the world is today in our own culture. A culture with unfettered greed, with festering envy, with violence both in the streets and in war around the world. A world that's filled with arrogance where people believe they could get along without the Lord of the universe. Everyone living their own lives according to their own wits. And this is at the heart and root of the chaos of the world and the chaos that runs through our own minds, hearts, and imaginations. But having said that, Isaiah said, look, we can't claim you because of the way we're living. You certainly don't owe us anything except divine judgment. Nevertheless, we're your children. For some unfathomable reason, you have called us to yourself. You have claimed us for yourself. And if it takes scattering the mountains, shaking up the earth to get our attention, please do it. We need to be reformed by you. We want to be clay in your hands. You're the potter. Make us into something beautiful, something wonderful, something useful. The clay is a lump, is just a lump of clay. But at the hands of a skilled potter, it can hold water that gives life. It can bring life to plants. It can bring, bring beauty to any home. So he says, reform us. At the very beginning of the scriptures, humanity was made in the image and likeness of God. And that image and likeness, by its very nature, is good and beautiful. But only by the hands of God can that beauty begin to re-manifest itself in the likes of us. Now, in this Advent season, we're preparing for Christmas, for the great feast of the Incarnation. But we also need to begin to prepare for the Incarnation of Christ more deeply and fully in our own souls, our own hearts, our own minds, and our own imaginations. Now, in today's second reading, St. Paul, writing to the Corinthians, is amazed. When he arrived at Corinth, people were burnt out. It was a city that was prospering financially, but was spiritually bankrupt. To use the term Corinthian girl anywhere in the Roman Empire was a synonym for prostitute. It was a grossly amoral society. See, an immoral society is when people know what morals are and don't follow them. An amoral society means they haven't the slightest idea what morals are and so naturally don't follow them. And he came there and he went looking for work at a tent-making shop and much to his amazement, he came across uh, Prisca and Aquila who owned the tent-making company and happened to be disciples of the Lord in that city of moral chaos. They'd been kicked out of Rome and set up their business in Corinth. They joined forces and proclaimed the word made flesh. 
and told them how to really love patiently, kindly, enduring all things, how to love the God of the universe and to embrace the God of the universe incarnated in the very person of Christ. And that made all the difference in their lives. That's why this letter today has Paul rejoicing, astonished, amazed, and delighted. And when Paul looks at the likes of us, he has that same sense of astonishment. Here is the people of God in a land I never visited. Embracing that same Lord of life, that same Christ of Calvary. And in the midst of a world filled with moral chaos and darkness, there still is a light shining. And that's not because we're better than anybody else, but because of some strange mystery of God, we've been caught up in the plan of God. We were claimed in baptism by Christ, anointed with the cross at our baptism, confirmed in the spirit at our confirmation, and now living out our vocations within the context of God's divine plan. Astonishing truth. But God is not done with us yet. And God needs us to be pliable clay. And God wants all of us to become not just decent people, a hard enough thing to do, but God expects each one of us to be great lovers of the God of love and great lovers of one another. In other words, to be saints, truly whole and holy. And as long as we're not saints, we feel something broken inside us, something that's amiss. We can't put our fingers in. Well, I got a good job, nine to five. It's okay. My family seems nice enough. Uh, my health isn't all that bad, but there's something not quite right yet. And that's a sign that God wants us to take a further step closer to him and to become that great person that we were destined to be from the moment of our incarnation. But we're so often asleep to this reality. Priests, religious, bishops, uh, laity alike, yes, we have faith in God. But is our faith alive? Or are we just sort of half awake, like in the morning before we have our first cup of coffee? You know, we're dragging ourselves, brush the teeth, you know, put on our clothes, you know, go over to the coffee pot, and then all of a sudden you get a burst of caffeine and it wakes us up. Are we awake or not to this great reality? And this is what Jesus is talking about in today's gospel. It seems like we've been left on our own. The master of the house isn't around. We've been put in charge of certain areas of our life. Are we just coasting? Are we letting things go to pot spiritually? Are we letting vanity, lust, greed, envy, jealousy, anger to slowly envelop all aspects of our life? Are we trying to keep our spiritual household clean by being faithful to God, loving of neighbor, hopeful in a world that's lost its hope? Are we really being people of courage? Or are we being moral cowards? Are we being temperate in food and drink? Are we being prudent and wise in our daily decisions? Are we concerned with the injustices of the world and wanting to make them right. In other words, to be heroes in God's kingdom. And in this Advent season, we're called upon to awaken our faith and make it real because we have that great and awesome responsibility to be light to a darkened world.